Welcome to Baseball News Club. Today we're going to highlight the 60 game schedule for Major League Baseball. Before we start, please subscribe, follow us on Instagram or Twitter. Also, like the video, please make a comment. And finally, click the bell and then also activate your notifications on your cell phone. Hey everybody, welcome to Baseball News Club. My name is Chris. Today we're going to have episode 5 of the vlog. I know I haven't done them in a while. Obviously there's a lot of things going on in the planet, but just wanted to give you some exciting news most of us already know about. Baseball starting up on July 1st. There's links below of articles with a lot more details. I'm not going to go over all the details, but teams are going to be basically getting ready in their own ballparks on July 1st, and then we'll start Major League Baseball season around uh, the 23rd or 24th of July. So again, check out the links. They really explain all the details. What I want to go into is this is a 60-game season, not a 162-game season. You have to understand Major League Baseball teams are all built for 162-game seasons. When you look at the top teams at the end of the season, they all have the largest payrolls. When you look at the Yankees, Houston, Dodgers, they're built to last that long. There's a lot of teams I call them baseball 50, 100, and 150 game teams. There's teams that are just badass for 50 games, teams that are badass for 100, and teams that are badass for 150. Since it's an endurance race, the 60 game schedule, the 60 game schedule makes it totally different. It's not an endurance race. Okay, because they're not playing 162, they're just playing 60. So instead of an endurance race, this is going to become like a sprint. Or the way I put it, this is going to be like a bar brawl. This is 60 games. You don't have time to fall behind. You don't have time to wait. Hey, I, my pitchers aren't ready. Whoever is fastest out of the gate, whoever has the quickest start, is usually going to be the person at the end. And later on in the video, I'll show you some statistics from last year's in the standings. About 18 games in, 30 games in, and I think 60 games in plus the wild card. Totally different format, totally different teams if that was the case. Now granted, obviously they were playing for 160 games, not 60, so it's a totally different mentality. I understand that. What I'm saying is it's going to be different. And there isn't any MajorLeague.com, ESPN, analysts. There's nobody out there who's going to be able to predict the top 10 teams or the teams that make the playoffs because there's going to be some surprises guaranteed but again they were playing for a 162 game season i understand that this is a 60 game but again this is going to be a bar brawl every single game counts now sabermetrics i'm 50 years old i've been playing baseball my whole life in fact years ago i was just playing in an aluminum and wooden bat league i love the game sabermetrics i love being a sabermetrics geek but it's not going to apply. You're not going to have 162 games of numbers. And you're not going to be able to use last year's numbers because those were last year's numbers. This is a 60-game sprint. This is going to be totally different. So what this is going to come down to is what leads to sabermetrics is baseball, real baseball strategy. You're going to see teams play a little bit different. They're still going to be playing baseball. But with 60 games, you don't have time. You don't have time to do anything like the NFL. In the NFL, if you start 1-4 and four in a 16-game season, you're pretty much screwed. You're out. If you start 1-4, and four, that means you got 11 left. You have to go 8-3 and three just to get 9 wins. And everyone knows in the NFL, 9 wins doesn't guarantee you playoff berth. Same thing here in the major leagues. If you're at the 30-game mark in this season out of 60 games and you're 5 games out, you're going to have to go 25-5 and five and hope the team in front of you goes 20-10. and 10 and hope that you have face-to-face -face matchups. So that's why I'm saying is when you fall behind in the 60-game schedule, you're almost done quickly. It's going to be like NFL, so you got to come out of the gate quickly. I think there's going to be three types of fans. The fans like me, they're super stoked to see any type of baseball. I don't care if it's minor league players or uh, Korean baseball, any type of baseball. Then you get the people in the middle of the road who are kind of like, yeah, I like baseball, but I kind of don't. And then you got the people who are just the haters at the very end. They're just like, baseball sucks. It's too boring. I think the 60-game schedule is going to satisfy everybody. You don't have to endure 162 games. It's going to be a whole different competitive field. I'm excited about this. Even though it's not what we wanted, we're going to see some really interesting things. What's interesting is you're going to be the sabermetric people out there example if a player goes four for five with a solo home run so that's one run one rbi and they lose that's good for his stats but if you go 0 for four you have two rbis two runs scored and your team wins who is the most important player in that scenario obviously the player that donated to the win even though he went 0 for four he got on with two errors he might have moved the runners over by hitting ground balls to the right and that's how the runners scored or fly balls sacrifice flies i mean 
So that's why I'm saying strategy is really going to come into it. Every at bat's going to be very important. Every single game, you only have 60 games. You don't have time to go. You know what? I need to. I'll I'll get it next start, or I'll get it. You know, I'll warm up. Your team needs you during that game. So I think the teams that play really good baseball are going to be the ones. They're going to surprise people and come out on top. So a lot of the teams that have small budgets, they're built for 50 games. They're not built for 162. The big teams, they might have everything, but it takes a while for pitchers and players to warm up sometimes. And I'll show you in the standings here in a little bit. Real quick, we're going to go over standings from 2019. Now, quick disclaimer, I understand this is because they were playing for 162 game season. I'm just giving you a small example. What would have been if we played in a 60 game schedule? So let's take a look at this. At about 18 games, you have Tampa Bay up top. You have Cleveland and Minnesota. And look at Detroit's even in the mix and Seattle's in the mix. So based on 18 games, that's interesting right there. Let's look at the National League. Okay, when you look at the National League, look at that. You got Philadelphia on top after 18 games. You got Milwaukee and Pittsburgh in the mix. St. Louis is not even in it. And you got the Potteries right there in the wild card. So, again, just a small example. Let's move on to about a 30 game, 32 games in. Yeah, let's take a look at about a 30 game mark, maybe 33, 32 around there. But you got Tampa still up top. Uh, Cleveland's in the mix. And Detroit's still in the mix. And Detroit ended up losing over 100 games. Seattle's still in the mix. And Texas is right there. So, again, I understand this is just kind of like a scenario example. And we take a look over at the National League. Philadelphia is still on top. Uh, Cubbies and M Milwaukee are leading the way. Uh, now Arizona pops into the wild card and San Diego is on the outside. So again, that's about 33, 32 games in, a little bit different. Now if we take a look at about 60 games, give or take a few games here or there. Look at the wild card. Texas, Oakland, Los Angeles, Cleveland. Very interesting. Totally different scenario than what happened last year. Now, if you take it like this, totally different. 60 games-ish into the National League last year. Philadelphia was up top. Cubbies, Milwaukee. And then you look at the wild card. Just, again, painting a scenario here. This could be exactly what we're going to see this year. Now, I want to digress back into the earlier points I made in the vlog. Guess whose stats these are? Take a guess. This is Garrett Cole's numbers through eight games. He was... 3-4 and four with a 4.17 ERA. So this just goes to show if a pitcher is not ready to go, despite how good they are, it's going to impact the team, and you're going to see these really good teams with big budgets struggling, and I guarantee there's going to be one or two big budget teams that are not going to make the playoffs. Let's take a look at the wild card example from last year through about 60-ish games. Look at the wild cards. Pretty similar. Houston, Minnesota, and Yankees, and Tampa, but you got Texas in there, Boston, and Cleveland on the outside, so very different scenario, and Oakland on the outs. Now let's look at the National League. Look at Cubbies, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Atlanta, and then you got Colorado and St. Louis and San Diego right there in the race. So different scenario through 60-ish games. Now let's take a look at the All-Star break and the players' averages. Look at Jeff McNeil would have had a batting title, and Brian Reynolds is up there. I mean, totally different scenario. I really think someone's actually going to hit 400 or have a good chance of doing that uh, through a 60-game schedule. Take a look at these pitchers at the All-Star break. Totally different scenario where they ended up at the very end of the season. So, again, this is my point. Uh, pitchers are only going to get probably seven to nine starts. So, everything is going to matter. Every game is going to count. Every at-bat, every start. It's going to be really micromanaged. And I think the, the field is wide open. Uh, I think a lot of the big-budget teams will make the playoffs, but I, I guarantee there's going to be some surprises in there. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if Texas pops in there, Padres pop in there. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for watching Baseball News Club. Please subscribe and have a great day.